So we've been living in a world where COVID-19 has been disrupting pretty much everything that we do. And when you think about conferences and how we run those events, we obviously need to make sure that we figure out how to register our attendees, sign them up, and all of this administration work that needs to be done ahead of time. Well, for some conference organisers, there has to be a quick shift to go ahead and react to that. And that's what we're going to be talking about today here on Cloud with Chris. Hello there and welcome back to another episode on Cloud with Chris. You're with me, Chris Reddington, and here we talk about all things cloud. Now, thank you folks for joining. We are in an episode of Tales from the Real World today. So this is one of those episodes where we look less at the theory and look more at some of the real world applications of cloud. And as you heard from the introduction there a moment ago, we've got a great guest on today. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, a real world scenario where actually for a conference to go ahead, needed to look to the cloud and some of the technologies that are there to enable that conference to actually go ahead seamlessly and make sure everything could continue running as expected. And today we're going to be talking actually about identity. So. A lot of the time we think about identity as one of those underpinning services or one of those underpinning concepts. And it just works. It's just there. We kind of forget about it because it's that thing that is always there. It just works. We'd like to build the applications on top of it. But what we need to think about is really how identity underpins the work that we do. And in this scenario we'll be talking about today, it really has been the silver bullet, the clue is in the name that helped the conference move ahead and actually uh, progress. So I'm delighted today uh, to introduce Facundo La Roca. Hopefully pronounced that right. We'll soon find out. And uh, we'll bring Facundo onto the show here. So uh, as usual, if you like this session, please hit like, please hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so we can bring more great speakers like Facundo onto the show. So with that, let's introduce Facundo. Hey, Facundo, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Hi, Chris. Thank you for having me here today. No, thank you for joining. And uh, really, really pleased to have you on the show here. I think we've got a really great topic. I think real world experiences are always great to talk about because theory is one thing, but understanding how it applies in the real world is even better. So before we jump into any of the technology first, let's maybe uh, introduce yourself. Yes, absolutely. My, my name is Facundo La Roca. I am in Argentina, Buenos Aires. But by the way, people call me Facu, which is a nickname. And I'm a software developer, mostly in Microsoft stack. I've been using C Sharp for at least 15 years so far, and probably Azure for the last five years. Nice. That's where I spend mo most of the time. Excellent, excellent. And one of the things you also do is you uh, organize a conference as well. So uh, vOpen, I believe. Yes, yes. Uh, I love spending some time doing things for the community um, and be open is one of those things that I love doing. Excellent. Excellent. So I guess then let's maybe start by setting the scene and painting the picture a little bit for anyone who's listening in. So the, obviously this is a conference that you go and organize. I'm assuming it's an annual event and for 2020, I guess, so last year, there was this big pandemic thing called COVID-19. Some people may have heard about it. Um, it's been very disruptive to all of our lives and, of course, uh, to yourself as a conference organizer as well. So maybe help us understand a bit some of the time frames and some of the challenges that came up initially that you had to start dealing with. Yes, absolutely. Yes, the Be Open conference is a, is a conference that takes place every year, probably October or November, mostly. It used to be a physical event mm. with people going to, to a place where uh, we invited the sponsors, the speakers, and then the whole community. Sure. Every, everything took place in presence, so people used to be there. So if we need information from the audience, we, we had people there. But then, as you were saying, COVID came into play. Um, time went by. At the very beginning, if you remember, by March, it was a lot of uncertainty about what would happen. Yep. And well, we had to improvise and change. Of course. So I guess then before COVID was a lot of the 
attendee registration and the uh, guest kind of signups all manual and paper based then or was there some kind of you know local system to deal with that yes uh, we used to use eventbrite for registration and yes. people used to scan a, a barcode just in the entrance okay. of the building whatever it may be with you and any other information we did it yeah in paper or we ask and we fill up some forms but it was we with the people there uh, face to face gotcha no eventbrite is a great platform but already i'm seeing where the challenge lies because with eventbrite you have an app typically i think don't you where you scan the barcodes to understand if people are attending certain events or not and that's your way of interacting with that but obviously you don't have that in the virtual world and that's the challenge you then need to solve for yes the the main challenge we had was that we wanted to collect some custom information from the audience like seniority technologies they used uh, years of experience if they spoke uh, english any other languages and that information was not avail available in, in eventbrite and we could do anything without so we had to do something different sure sure and i guess the clue is in the title of uh, this particular episode i suppose we're going to be talking about um, azure active directory b2c but before we jump to that technology first i guess maybe help us understand the process you went through you know you've got the problem statement there you understand the challenge for example what was then the next step for you to figure out maybe what tools or what technology you could use to actually solve that challenge yeah this is going to be amazing and funny um as, as i was saying mm -hmm. time went by and we ran out of time so we had to do something we need yeah. we had to design a system just to get people registered, get some information, and then based on that information, do some uh, games or engagement activities with the audience, with the sponsors, that kind of stuff. Sure. So we, did, we didn't have time. Uh, and as you may may know, says coding was the last thing we wanted to do. Sure. Um, be, building anything regarding registering, logging, it, it takes mm -hmm. three to four weeks at mm -hmm. least, and we didn't have that time. Right. So we did something very special. A friend of mine and myself decided to go on a two hours um, round and say, okay, one hour research, half an hour discussion and half an hour make a decision, whatever the result is mean, maybe. Okay, nice. so that was the plan. Whatever that we found on the internet, that was going to be the solution. Just the other way around, as we usually develop solutions, we usually go from what we want <laughs> and then we we're still looking for the solution Th this time was exactly the other way around is let's see what we can get and then we will see yep gotcha and it's very very tight time frames there is that you know i think the obvious elephant in the room here for anyone listening in i think these days is you don't want to build your own identity system as soon as you start talking about identity if building your own even comes up on the list you should probably scratch it off the list straight away because when we think about all of those opportunities for data leaks data exfiltration all of these kind of things the cyber security world we live in today especially in the time frames we're talking about that's you know not an option at all so um yeah i guess you've got less than three weeks or you know even less than two weeks i think he was saying and you're going in two hours to decide the technology that you're going to use one hour research uh 30 minutes debate almost a 30 minutes decision wow that is like uh that almost sounds like one of those assessment centers or interviews or something you know it's it's interesting yes exactly what one important point once you start gathering information from the users things become weird because you are responsible for that information exactly. even if you are a conference okay where, where you are not a profitable entity but even in that case you're still responsible for that information yes. okay so that's why that, that was an option it's too much complicated you need to take care of certificates uh, encryption or rest scalability uh, reliability there is a lot of stuff you, do, you don't want to deal with so that that's that's true absolutely and regulations right like here in the 
EU, we have GDPR, there's a similar in California now as well, of course. And, um, you know, people, I think, are a lot wiser about what data they're giving to people as well, even down to signing up to things on Facebook, you know, and giving access to other um, other platforms, to that data. I think people are starting to become a lot wiser that, and data is king, data is currency, and uh, everyone knows that. Next. Yes, that that's true. Yeah, it, it's really really challenging. It's really challenging. Gotcha. So then you're you're in this two hour period of deciding what you're going to go for. How did that discussion go? Well, this is interesting. My friend went to uh, AWS because he was familiar with that platform. I say, okay, I'm familiar with Azure. I'm gonna go with Azure. But the Something that blew my mind away was that after 30 minutes using Azure ADB to see, I had 80% of the solution already done. Wow. So, and I was totally surprised because mm. from the demo, I went straight away into the solution. So that, that was something amazing. So, um, indeed, if you allow me, I'm, I'm going to show yeah. you a brief sure. demo on how quickly we can do that. Awesome. And just to, just to confirm there, just to make sure I understood, that's within the 30 minutes of those two hours as well, you pretty much were able to get that 80% done. Yes. Wow. I started my side of the research and I went through Azure ADB to see because I, I was familiar with, with Azure products um, and start instead of reading something, I said, okay, let's go straight away. Let's, let's do something. I started... No coding, actually. I'm doing this uh, this move, but I didn't have to call, yep. um, and I and I got the solution in thirty awesome. minutes. That's excellent. And I thought that's what you said. I just wanted to double check, just in case anyone is listening in, thinking, "Wow, <laughs> you know, just to really pull it out." That's cool. Good. Okay, let me bring up the screen then, because I think uh, we're going to be looking at some hands-on stuff here. Awesome. Yes. Absolutely. So yeah, this is this is a platform, right? Mm -hmm. At the very beginning, this is a React uh, application. Sure. At the very beginning, it was just pure SPA. There is nothing here that you can. It's purely informational purposes, right? Uh, call for sponsors, call for speakers. Re registering was not an action at that point. Uh, we went through event, right? Okay. So this is what we had before actually going into this journey. And let me show you quickly what we did. Sure. Okay, I'm gonna click on login. Something happened. And I do have Google, LinkedIn, and GitHub integrations. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go with, let, let's go with Google. Sure. Uh, let's pick up an account. Oh, look at this. This is beautiful. So I, I even have custom information uh -huh. where I can get my name, uh, country, let's set up something, uh -huh. state or province, there we go, let's put be open, let's check up some roles, uh, no, do you want to get news? Of course I want English level advanced and how many years let's say more than 10 continue and what i love about that experience that you just um went through there as well for anyone who hasn't used azure adb to see already before there was some information that was already populated as well because you chose to sign start the process with i think you selected your google account um so you know your email address is populated there for example your name was populated initially as well and of course you know if, if you allow more information more information could potentially be populated through of course but it just shows how some of that integration is there you know you're not creating a brand new account from scratch necessarily in B2C, you're actually using that uh, external provider there, but I'm sure we'll talk more about that in a bit as well. Yes, uh, all of this came out of the box. I didn't have to do anything yeah. for this. So let's proceed. I think I need to send my verification code. So I do have um, email verification. So 
this is awesome. And I'm not doing anything specific. I, I will show you this in a minute. Mm, absolutely. And this there is was. to protect against, you know, spoofing, spam, all of this type of stuff to verify you are actually Facundo La Roca. You know, it's not someone trying to impersonate you. Yep. Exactly. Um, I do have certificates. I don't have to take care of that. I don't need to take care about deployment, databases, scalability, resiliency. So everything was already solved. And I mean, so all that stuff that you've seen there is what I build almost in 30 minutes. Wow. That's awesome. And I guess there's going to be people here going, okay, Fukundo, but you know, you, you know Azure, you know these things, or you know this, but was B2C something that you'd touched in the past at all? Was it something you were aware of? No. Awesome. No, no, no. So uh, that was a, the first time indeed, that I, I had a chance to to really dig into it. Yeah. Um, for the certification that I that I got, I had to read a little bit about it, but it was mostly theoretical. Gotcha. So I didn't have real experience with the service. Nice. That's awesome. Awesome. So and that that was all. Now it's not only what you see there. Mm. If I need re reports from my users. I can use Microsoft Graph API to get the reports. I can I can even do some segmentation, filtering. So it it is much more than just uh, a registration form. Yeah, you get. I, I'm gonna show you in a minute. But there is also multi-factor authentication if you want. Yeah. yeah. Integration with third-party providers. You've seen that, which is not not simple because you may be thinking, okay, all of them uses OpenID Connect, but that's not true. Not all of them uses OpenID Connect. Oh, okay, that's interesting. That's interesting. And you mentioned, I think, uh, it was a React app that you were using? Yep. This, this is a React okay. app, yes. And I guess you're probably then on the client side using, what is it these days, MCell? Uh, no, this is, uh, we are using... Open ID Connect oh, library. Okay. It's a it's a common it's, it's a common uh, very standard protocol oh, um, and library. Nice. Oh, good. Excellent. And I just love how seamless it was. And you know, I've done some work with B two C in the past, so I kind of spot some of these things as we go. But for anyone who didn't notice as we went through the login and the signing experience, you actually redirected to a different site. Um, you redirected to a different area. So it had a dot b to c login dot com, and if you don't believe us, go back in the video, go take a look. You'll actually see it do that as well. Um, but this is what I love about b to c, is that you can make it look and feel just like the website that you're on. Because again, I think as users, we've become a bit wise to hold on. I'm redirecting somewhere else. Is this still the same website that I was on? Is this you know is someone hijacking what I'm doing here, or is this is this genuine? So love that experience very seamless yes um you don't need to to be an expert in design or ux to do that it's actually pretty simple i'm definitely not so yeah you you can go you can go deeper if you want and, and use your own css uh, css uh, css yes I, i'm saying uh, correct css and html files if you mm -hmm. want but believe me, you don't need you don't need to do that that deep. Sure. Yeah, I'm not a designer, and I've even done some customization in it, so I can vouch for what everything that you said there. I am far from a designer. Awesome, cool. So let's take a look at B to C then, because I guess that's uh, what you're going to show us some more of here. Yes, I I have my already my instance open. So by the way, if you need to create a resource. Yeah, I'm going to show you. This is real life. This is how I did it, right? So I'm not going to fully create this service because it will take a couple of minutes. I, I already have it. So, But the creation per se is pretty simple. So you, you don't need too many options. And this is very important. Since this is a business to consumer option, it is designed to be simple. Yes. It is designed to allow you to build all that experience that you've seen without actually you having to code anything it's from the portal, which is an additional feature 
uh, amazing feature, by the way. So just uh, regular stuff, organization name. This is this must be unique because we are under on Microsoft.com domain. Uh, initial domain name. Sorry, this this must be unique uh, organization name is for just a uh, description of purposes. So you're OK. Country and region. The reason for this is because uh, there must be resources that uh, have to be allocated. Um, usually you may want to to deploy your your tenant closer to your users as close as possible. Subscription resource group that that's all you're done. Nice. So you it's not a lot of information that you really need. No, no very simple. And I guess just to ask a question here as well, something that people may be wondering, and I suspect I know the answer to this, but I'll ask anyway. Um, there's Azure AD B2C, there's B2B, there's Azure AD as well. What made you go down the B2C route? Excellent question. Azure Active Directory um, B2C is built on top of Azure Active Directory, right? So if you are an Azure Active Directory user, this will sound familiar to you. What B2C adds is all that layer of uh, layouts that you've seen that you can present to your users, uh, not to your users, to your consuming application straight away. So that's a B2C part that you see there. So that allows us to build all, all those layouts that works in a flow and, and you will see that concept here so when you log in then i had the option to select a provider and then based on the provider i went to another layout where i had to fill up my form it's a kind of flow all that stuff comes from the b2c side sure. uh, that the platform also offers awesome excellent and what i'm sure facundo will show in a moment for anyone listening is uh, the flows are the user flows and it's it's just so so powerful it brings a smile when i see some of this technology coming together because as you say it is just so simple to let users bring their accounts wherever they are you know whether it's twitter or google or facebook or linkedin or github or wherever just bring that account just log into my app done there you go <laughs> uh, Ex awesome. exactly Exactly. Um, and again, when it comes to authentication, I I prefer just having an expert doing that and not myself. And I and I prefer spending the time in, in things that add real value to my users, right? Not yes. authentication, which is difficult. Uh, yeah. That's why I think this is amazing. Yeah, difficult. And let's face it, as individual developers try to build a system like that, we're probably going to do it wrong. So let's just leave it to a company like Microsoft that builds something like Azure AD B2C, where they've got teams who build the service to go and let them do that instead of us. Could not agree more. <laughs> Could not agree more. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, this is a creation. This will take probably 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so let's move forward. So once you have created your tenant and you get the, the notification bell there, you will end up here. This this is the, the home screen for Azure ID B2C. And as, as you can see, it's very intuitive. They are even telling you, OK, there are three steps that you need to do. It says register an application, create or add providers. Uh, those are the ones that you've seen. It's Google, Facebook. You can even use username and password if you want, uh, which is amazing because for some cases, you have a database there, a user database there. You don't need to do anything. Um, and finally, you create a user flow. And that's all what you need to do. Gotcha. So wh what's uh, an application? An application, so you need some mechanism to identify that whoever is calling your service is something authorized. In this case, it was the the beopen.tech Mm -hmm. front end i i don't want any th this is an open solution so i don't want any other applications using my my tenant that's why i need to register an application um providers you always need a, someone to provide uh, the identity 
right? It can either, either be what they call the local provider, which is username and password, or, or it can even be any other provider that accepts OpenID Connect or that is already built into the platform. And the user flow is all that stuff regarding the signs that you sure. see. That, that's why you need it. Um, so again, I came here and, and I just started creating things. I'm going to just register an application. Mm -hmm. uh, let's create one. And this is the same kind of app registration experience if I've used Azure AD before. Probably going to be familiar with this. Yes, I think it's exactly the same. And if you have ever used any other uh, authentication system, it can be Okta, Outfit, or any of them, this is this will be pretty familiar. Yes. Because there may be some differences, but it's pretty standard. So I'm going to give you the name. With Chris, so I can I can choose what kind of account I want to use. In this case, this is open. Is any any account? Mm -hmm. And there is only one more thing that I need to set up. Is the callback URL. Sure. Um, this must point to my application. Azure ID B two C. Once all the authentication has been finished, uh, your identity has been proven. We create a token, a shade WT token, and, and we return back that token to that application. That's why it's very important that we uh, this kind of whitelist. So we don't want any other application catching up your token. Absolutely, because if we didn't have that safety check in there almost, then the potential is that actually, if someone happens to be able to intercept it and you know point to their own application, they could capture that token and pull out all of the uh, claims and all of the information and potentially send it on somewhere and impersonate you, which is obviously not what anyone wants. So, you know, don't put any random URLs in these boxes here, folks. This is why it's there. So uh, make sure you take note of that. Yeah, absolutely. So just for testing purposes, because I, I want to do, to show you how this sure. looks like, I'm going to use this this site that will allow us just to take a look at, at the token. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in real world, I set up my uh, beopen.tech slash mm -hmm. callback OpenID Connect, that, that uh, URL. So I'm going to click on register. Just let me, sorry, I've realized this is not in English. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. So <laughs> let's change I was, it. I was doing some translation on the fly in my head. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Amazing. Let's apply. My very limited uh, Spanish as well. <laughs> there we go. There we go, cool. There we go. Let's close this out. There we go. I just register my application. And it's coming. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer just in, in load the options. Yeah. Oh. And sometimes behaves behaves weird. <laughs> Especially in demos as well. <laughs> that that's true it is it is i find that whenever i'm doing a screen share or something like that the demo gods are never kind but no it's good so i guess then this app registration um just while we wait for that to load i guess the same kind of concept that we're used to with like a client id a client secret and putting that into the um the application code as configuration is really what we're talking about here, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Um, we will match this. We will see when, when you integrate on, on the application side, we will have to use a client ID and a client secret that we will generate for this specific application. Gotcha. So let's click on register. There we nice. go. basic stuff, so I, I didn't have to do anything. Eventually, 
I may want to get some tokens. So this is optional, but I'm done. So on, on the on the application side, appli application registration side, I'm done. Okay. Just a just a few clicks. Nice, and that's that's all we need then at that point to start configuring some of the code in our application. I guess there may be additional tweaks that we need to make a bit later, but the very basic building block as a client ID, the client secret is what we find inside of this application then. Yes, exactly. Indeed, you don't even need a client secret because we, we are going to be using, which is a the code authorization flow. It's just a client, yes. client ID, yes. what we need. Something that we do have here. Mm. So this is all, all what you need. I'm, I'm going to show you this in a minute. Nice. Uh, well, actually, we have both. Okay, <laughs> the other one was being created. Exactly. So, step number one is like let's register an application. Step number two, let's create some providers. Sure. Um, this is going to be very intuitive. Local account is by default added. I added the GitHub one because um, I didn't want to expose the client secret. You have to do this on your GitHub side in order to have your GitHub account configured, right? But this is pretty standard. Mm -hmm. I, are, I already have my callback URL. This is something I need to configure on GitHub side, okay? And I need to grab client ID and client secret that GitHub provides for me. Yep. And I just come here, paste client ID, client secret, give it a name, and I'm done. Nice. I, I don't need to do anything else on this side. Gotcha. I think it's similar, isn't it, for a lot of those identity providers is just on the identity provider side, what is the callback URL? Kind of similar to what you did when you set up the app registration. Same kind of idea. What's the allow list of where we're sending something back towards? Um, and then getting from the identity provider your login credentials effectively for that registration over there that allows you to almost do something on behalf of that provider there. Yeah, exactly. Something lovely about, about the platform is that LinkedIn doesn't use OpenID Connect. Yeah. They use just plain OAuth. Ah, okay. And unbelievable, Apple doesn't use OpenID Connect. They don't even use um, OAuth. They, they have a slightly different protocol. Right. So if you are by your own, then you need to deal with every almost every single provider in a yes. different way which is a lot of work um, and they are solving everything very transparently you just came here configure the basic stuff and that's all you are done yes yeah yeah gotcha so i do have my local account which is username and password by default i've got my github account just a few clicks and i'm done with providers now i i can move to the most important part, which is the uh, user flows that we were talking before. Gotcha. And this is something very interesting. You, you've seen a lot of different screen there because mm. you have user registration, the sign up form, eventually you may have um, password reset, password recovery, multi-factor authentication, mm. um, error pages, a lot of different things. Of course, I'm not going to do anything about that by hand. I'm just going to use all the options that are uh, already built in. Like gotcha. sign up and sign in. So the, the, the platform provides you with a lot of different standards that you can use. So you don't have to be your own. Nice. And this is effectively then setting up those as the name implies, right? User flows, those different paths and those different journeys to interact with Azure AD B2C as an end user. Nice. Exactly. And if there are some cases that, that you need to tweak or or you, you want to do something different because mm -hmm. you want to hit an external API or push a, a message to a third party service, something like that, you can still do that and provide everything by hand. Uh, but let's say 90% of the cases, this is ready to use. 
So I'm going to pick up sign up and sign in, which is uh, they are separated because in some cases, depending on your, your, your use case, you may want to have sign in on one side and sign up on the other. Um, I'm going to use the, the combined one that allows you to either log in or register if you don't have an account yet. Sure. So let's hit create. Again, give it a name. Let's select what providers I want to include. Let use uh, email sign up GitHub. There are more stuff here. I'm not going to use it like multi-factor authentication. As you can see, this is already implemented. Mm. I can also, if I want, I can go ahead and just create this. But if I am registering a user, I may want to collect some very common information like surname, let's go show more, sign name or given name, email addresses, uh, postal code, a lot of different options. So let's assume that I want to go with very basic information like given name and something. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I may want to include some of those uh, attributes into the token that Azure will return back to our application. So I can do it here as well. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's hit also user is new so that the application knows that this is a new user. Yeah. Eventually, the app, the app can react uh, differently in that case. So let's yeah. hit OK and create. Nice. And I so, guess those user attributes as well, you can add your own ones to that as well, because you, of course, had, uh, I think it was like, do you want to get emails or be notified or something like that? Do you want to pass your details over to sponsors? You can add your own attributes in there then. Yes, absolutely. Indeed. Uh, when I was going through the Be Open site, you saw English level experience. Um, I remember a couple of more, but they, they are pretty custom. They are not built in here into the platform. So you can do that also. But yes. just just to give you an idea, so we've been doing this for ten minutes, and I'm going to show you something. I am I am done. So let me show you. I'm I'm gonna I want to the flow. I'm gonna just go ahead and click run user flow. Uh -huh. I'm going to run it. And we are done. So this was my process. So I started my research and suddenly in 10 minutes I had this. So this for me, that was very mind blowing. Yes. I couldn't believe that it was so easy. Um, let me show you. I don't have an account yet, so let's sign up. And again, I love the fact that even on that page right there, all you've done is configure it, right? There's no coding being done. It's all been done through configuration. You were able to go and sign up through GitHub as well. So exactly. Again. Exactly. This is something amazing because uh, I've used other platforms and believe me, you need to code something. So th there are things that are not intuitive that you need to to learn. You need to read. You you need to go back and forth in order to learn. So this time didn't happen. So I do have my registration form. And let me show you something amazing. Cause our audience was English speakers, but also Spanish speakers. Mm. So we needed translation. It's not only all this stuff. I needed translation. Sure. That's that's a huge change if you had to implement that. So the translation or, or multi-language support is one of those things that if you haven't designed your application from the scratch to support both or, or many languages, then you probably need to modify almost every single string in the platform. And it's painful. It's painful. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so I am in in my user flow, there is a section called languages here. I'm gonna, the first time you need to enable translations. There we go. I'm gonna use Spanish. There is only one thing I need to do. 
is enabled and eventually in a, in a, I want this to be the default language, I can click it. But let, let's let's keep English as the default. Sure. Let's save the changes. There we go. Okay, we are done. Let's try to run the user flow again. I do have this new localization helper here. I can choose any language. If I choose a language that is not configured, we are going to go to the default, which is English in this case. Um, just, are you a fan of the Lord of the Ring and you want to include elf language? Look at this. You, you can, <laughs> actually, which is amazing. Wow. This is the great thing, right? When you think about the possibilities, you know, there are going to be gaming websites out there like RPG, MMORPG type websites that would love functionality like that, you know, Star Trek logging on with Klingon or something like that. It's, there you go. Wow. Look at that. It's all in Spanish. You've done zero it's... again, apart from configuration. Exactly. And what about the, the the background, the logo? Because this doesn't look like my own site. So I would like to configure it. So let, let's do it. Um, let's go to the B2C. There is this section here, company branding. Mm. Uh, I need to enable. I'm, I'm going to just provide. There are some restrictions, okay, because sure. um, this is a standard. It's, uh, file size and uh, image size so let's i had something prefer prepare it's gonna sure. <laughs> let's select the logo i created i created this especially for you <laughs> oh, thank you <laughs> I am let's honest. save it there we go let's give it another try user flows you, you can have many user flow depending on the application. You, you may you may want to get some information for some application, but then for other apps, you don't want to get all those attributes, then you can play around with those and create many user flows. So you, you are not limited to only one. And some of the default ones as well there um, were things like user profile editing, password reset as well. So, you know, the, you quite likely would have many of those in a normal application there as well. Exactly, exactly. Indeed, um, profile editing is another very good feature that probably you want to have in your uh, in your set of yes. user flows. Yeah. Excellent. So let's give it a minute while it's loading. There we go. Yeah. There we go. So I do have some customization. It's not too fancy. But it shows, doesn't it, how you can, just with a few little tweaks, start getting something which is being more representative of your brand, your site, what you're trying to aim towards and makes it feel a little more like that uh, that environment that you're uh, building for. Exactly. And just to 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 keep the context of, of this session, Yeah. this was my whole process of, researching so i wasn't expect when i started doing this i wasn't expecting to find a solution out of there mm. but rather a plan and and i was creating everything i, I was at this <laughs> stage and say okay so i'm almost done um as as we've seen i needed some custom fields so let, let's try adding adding them so i'm gonna go back to to the to the home, I need to go to user attributes. Yeah. And you will see a list of already built in attributes. Okay. So these are ready to use. You don't need to do anything special. Mm -hmm. But let's add one more. Let's say English level. English level, there we go. I want to be a string because I want to use basic, medium, and, and advanced. Mm -hmm. I can give you a description. There we go. That's all. Now I can come back to the user flow 
and in the same section that, that you saw before where I, I selected what I want to collect yeah. and eventually what I want to return, I can just select this new field, English level, saved. See, and this is really interesting, isn't it, where so easily you've made that a part of effectively that that user flow. So could be something like signing in, signing up, and whether it's visible, whether it's returned, um, could be editing the profile, etc. But when you think about your application and the vopen kind of website, you know, if if you wanted to recommend particular sessions above others and start creating a really integrated experience about, hey, we know that um, you know, maybe your English level is basic, for example, so you'd prefer um you know, Spanish only talks, for example, or Spanish first talks, let's prioritize those on the website for you, for example, and doing things like that. And that's what I love about this is that wider impact and potential. Yeah, indeed, that that's exactly the case. Uh, why we needed this English level, because we had session in Spanish and in English, and there is no sense in recommending an English session to someone who doesn't speak English. Gotcha. Um, so that's why we needed this. And the same happened with years of experience or seniority. So there, there may be uh, talks that are very advanced. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't make sense or it would make less sense recommending those sessions to people who is new. Um, so that, that's why we needed that information. So there, there we go. So this is, this is one of the, the first things that I needed to think because I'm going to show you something. Oh. So I, I added my English level. So let's go to sign up. Let's see. Oh, well, it's not a combo box. I, I don't like it. it. It's not what I am expecting. Um, so this was the most complicated part that I had to figure out. And I'm going to show you when I when I say complicated, you will see what it is. <laughs> sure. Let's go again in the meantime, because I, I wanted to show you exactly so, so we can understand how these flows work. Yeah. This opening, let's give it a try. There we go. OK, so first, first time I got the login screen. OK, then I click on sign up and I went to this screen, yes. which is a registration form. Yes. OK, and here I have all different elements that are going to be rendered into this screen. So if I go to my user flow, there is a page layout sections where you will see all of them. You have the unified sign up or sign in page. You have local account sign up and then you see here all these elements that I have here. So I, I don't even need to do anything specific. I, I, it's just as simple as coming here and say, OK, I want a drop down list. Yep. Eventually, I can say, OK, I want this to be optional or not, or the same with the name. OK. There we go. OK, and now I need to provide values for this because I don't have values, actually. Mm. So th this is very custom. It's not something that that uh, I should provide. Oh. So I can go to the language section. Uh, yep, yep. Uh, and you have every single page that you see there in the flow has a JSON file, which is where all the, the, the translation are. Gotcha. So it's a, it's a simple as downloading that JSON, looking for the string you're looking for, changing whatever the value that may be, and just uploading the file, and you are done. Yeah. And you have trans everything translated. It's pretty simple. Isn't, isn't modifying a JSON coding for you? Would you say that you are coding? No, it's it's configuration still, isn't it? It's awesome. Where it's still yep. not coding. Yep. Um, 
And that was the whole journey. Wow. Actually. I, and I love that, right? We've talked very, very little about code. You know, I think the one area where we talked about code was about configuring the websites to talk to Azure DB to see. And, you know, yes, that is absolutely something that would need to be done to, to get those to communicate. Regardless what technology you pick, you have to get the website to talk to your identity store. But the fact that all the power, all of the magic that happens inside B2C, and we've touched very little code, I think is really showcasing the power of uh, the service there. Really, really awesome. Yes, and remember that we had limited time, so we, we didn't want to spend too much time on yes. it. So getting this out of a research uh, task is something uh, priceless. Mm. And I think uh, and that was really amazing. Th there's also something really important to pull out here as well, that on the one hand, absolutely, there was the uh, time constraint and the time pressures that you had. And you had to actually make, make sure the conference can go ahead. You get all the minimum pieces. But actually, there's all of the stuff that we've talked about, which is above that as well, the value that it brings, like the multi-language support, uh, like the... Uh, branding, for example, you know, those are two features of B2C, fair enough. But thinking about your website and the experience you give to your end users, the fact that you can build an experience based upon, hey, we know uh, your level of ling English speaking, hey, we know uh, your level of seniority, and the fact you're able to build that into your platform as well and make that part of the experience that's not just meeting the initial requirements of, you know, we need to collect the user information, et cetera. That's then enhancing the experience that you had before, I'm assuming, because I suspect there wasn't really, you know, a scalable solution for that beforehand. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. It is much more than just the, the, the login that we've seen. And that allow, that allow us to go to the next level of the platform, yeah. because on top of this, uh, we were able to build much more features like an interactive interactive chat that we needed. Nice. And we had some, instead of requiring our own APIs, we used Azure Functions to build that, that interaction. And of course, this integrates almost smoothly uh, among services yes. uh, within Azure, yes. which is another super feature. Yes. Um, so it's, it's not not only this, it's all the value that you get from Azure per se and the integration with our platforms. Awesome. Awesome. And I guess what you're alluding to there is the, as it was called, easy auth functionality uh, inside of App Service or Azure Functions. And yes, you know, having Azure ADP to see with something like Azure Functions, maybe even API management as your facade between all of that brings this really nice end-to-end -end kind of serverless workflow for your APIs, which is awesome. And B2C certainly fits into that. Really, really cool. So I guess then... Yes, there is, yeah. there is one more yeah, detail. Yeah, please. You know what the, what the budget for all this stuff was? Go ahead. Zero. So we didn't spend any single dollar. Because the, the, um, the offering, the product has uh, 5,000 monthly active users for free right. for every single account. Yeah, yeah. And because we didn't want uh, above that threshold, the service was for free. So we didn't have to spend any single uh, dollar in this solution. And I think that's what's awesome about this, isn't it? Is not only did you reduce your time to getting this done and were able to make sure the conference can go ahead as planned. Not only did you add extra functionality to your website and your platform to enhance the user experience, you managed to bring it all in at a budget of zero and make that free. And I think it's just awesome as a story. You know, you haven't just managed to deliver what you want to deliver. You've gone beyond that and brought it in at a budget of, minimal budget right so really really awesome story there for Kundo. so thank you for sharing that no uh, it was it was a pleasure i think it's a it's a very good example of uh, azure in the real life and how a service can really make your life easier
So I get uh, when it comes to security authentication and authorization. Yeah, yeah. And I guess as we start wrapping up here, because I think you know the the story here speaks for itself in terms of everything we've talked about. Is there anything you know for people listening in for watching the video that you want to leave them with? That, you know, I think there's been a lot of great information. Is there anything which has been particularly important that you want people to focus on or take away? Uh, my recommendation would be if you need to build something regarding authentication, uh, authorization, give it a try. I, I don't think that is worth start coding straight away without actually thinking about Azure ID B2C. Yeah, I think it's, re it's really a valuable service. Awesome. Excellent. Well, Facundo, brilliant, brilliant session. Lots of great insights and uh, valuable, valuable information shared there about your own real world journey. And I really want to stress that, right? This is not, you know, hey, let's put this together for Cloud with Chris. This is something that you encountered. COVID-19 was uh, impacting the event that you were going to run there and you had to come up with a solution and manage to solve it in record breaking time. So thank you for sharing the story. Great to have you on and uh, really pleased that you could use the technology to make the event a success. Awesome. It was a pleasure for me, Chris. Thank you for having me here. Um, yeah, amazing service. Great. Thank you for Kondo. So there we go, folks. We have been learning all about Azure AD B2C and how it solved a very real world problem. That's what we said in the beginning. Tales from the real world. We're going to look at how B2C can actually solve that in an event in a conference scenario. So you know what to do. If you liked this content, please hit the like button. Please hit subscribe. Please hit the notification bell so you can know as soon as there is new similar content available for you to consume. But of course, not just YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and cloudwithchris.com. And on cloudwithchris.com, you can listen to everything that we've just said and read the transcript in real time if you prefer as well. And of course, there's also some blog posts up there as well. And there's a little teaser about serverless APIs and API management in that session there as well. There is some content on the website about that. Not quite yet on B2C yet, but maybe coming soon. Who knows? So otherwise, folks, let us know how you're getting on. We'd love to engage with you on Twitter. Uh, all the details are over on the website. And as always, please stay safe. Please stay healthy. And until the next episode... Bye for now.